For a while I've been watching some PT Bottles film and makers projects on YouTube. And there are a lot of them. And I have to say, it is a very interesting project and I wanted to make one as well. So following the same steps and ideas, I've made the design, made a schematic for a PCB, 3D printed some parts and slowly made my own bottle to filament machine. Right now it's not perfect, but at least does it work? Well stick till the end of the video to find out. I've made the PCB to go with this project and order it with PCB Way. And basically together with an Arduino, it should control the heating block temperature, the feeding speed, maybe also a fan, it could also have a display and a control encoder and so on. So guys, let's see how to make a bottle to filament maker and then try to print something with that filament. So guys, let's get started. My friends, welcome back. The part list for such a project has 3D printed parts, some screws and nuts, bearings, also a PCB, electronics such as the Arduino, the drivers, the MOSFETs and so on. But we also need a wood board, a 3D printer heating block, a stepper motor and much more. If you search on YouTube, you can find all sorts of bottle to film and makers and I will put some other links below this video. The idea is to cut the bottle into long strips and we will see how to make that later in the video. And then we pass that strip through the heated block with a nozzle output close to 1.75mm. And that will give it the cylindrical shape. To pull the filament we use a motor, some gears and a spool. This is the 3D design that I have so far. So let's begin and see if we need to change something. First I've made the filament puller. For that we have these 3D printed parts. Two big gears and a cylinder in between. And all these parts were printed with PLA filament, 0.2mm layer height, 2 perimeters, 20% infill and a 0.4mm nozzle. And to increase the torque I've made another small gear and this gear will be rotating with another small gear connected to the stepper motor. I've also made two support sides to keep the gears in place. And this motor will be controlled with the stepper driver that goes on the PCB, right here. And by the way if you want to try this same project, you could download my PCB for free and then order it at PCBWay as well. So for that download the Gerber files and go to PCBWay.com. And here we click the code now button and select the PCB size, the amount of PCBs and the solder mask color. Then you click the save to cart and on the next page you click the upload button. And here upload the Gerber files that you have downloaded from my website. Wait a few moments for the PCBWay engineer to confirm that the files are ok and then you make the payment and receive the PCBs in just a few days. The finish quality is great as always. I never had problems with my prototyping PCBs and for only $5 I can test my projects over and over again till I have the final version that I like. Anyway once you have the PCB you can try this same project, so let's continue. I'll make this project on the go and then if needed I'll make a second version and improve the parts that might go wrong with this one. We need some sort of wood board to screw all the parts on it. I will use this one and first I mark where I want the filament puller to go. Then I make the holes. For the gears you will need two bearings on each side. And these are 608 ZZ bearings. You also need an M8 threaded rod, some nuts and washers. Now I use some entry screws and fix the entire support in place like this. Actually I first place it backwards, so I had to make other holes and fix it in place the correct way and also leave some space for the stepper motor. Once the puller is in place, I mark the holes for the stepper motor support 
and make sure that the small gear will be in touch with the big gear. And then I use the drill once again and make the holes. I use some short M3 screws and a NEMA 17 stepper motor and screw it in place on the 3D printed support. And then I screw this support in place next to the other gears. And basically the puller system is now ready. The next part we have to solve is the heating block. So for that I've ordered all sorts of aluminum blocks of different sizes. I've even ordered some aluminum bars so I could maybe try making my own block. But finally I've ended up using this stock block from one of the 3D printers and it has a 12V heater inside and a thermistor, so we could measure the temperature. And my PCB already has a voltage divider and a thermistor connector, so we could later measure the temperature using the Arduino. I first enlarged the input and removed the thread of the aluminum block with a 6mm drill. Then I make the input angle of the hole a little bit bigger. Then I added a brass nozzle and enlarged the hole using a 1.8mm drill. The standard filament size is of 1.75mm, but by pulling harder on the filament, even with a 2mm hole for example, we can make it closer to 1.75mm. But we should try to use different hole size and see the results. Anyway, now using this metal bracket used with stepper motors, and also this piece of an old PCB, I secure the heating block in place. It's important to use metal parts, because this will get very hot. The melting temperature of PET is above 200 degrees. So now we have the heating block with the support, wires for the heating element and the thermistor. But I don't screw it in place just yet. And next I've made this small spool to keep the bottle PET strip. And this will be screwed in place on the other side of the board but a little bit to the side, and this is why. In order to make sure that the plastic strip won't rotate and it will always be horizontal, we have this other part, and this will keep the strip straight, and point it towards the heating block. So I screw in place this part as well. And next I decide where to place the heating block, and using two more screws I fix it in place as well. So when I have everything where I want it, more or less, I make some holes for the wires, so they could go below the wood board because I want to keep all the electronics below. I've also printed these legs, and this will give some space from the ground so the electronics could fit below. So I make the holes and add a leg on each corner. Now the pulling and the heating system is ready. It's time to repair the PCB. So order my design from PCBWay.com. As you can see the board has a space for an Arduino, a stepper driver, connector for the main input supply, connector for the heater and the fan, more connectors for the thermistor, a rotor encoder, a display, and some other inputs and outputs. It also has spaces for two MOSFETs, and this will control the power applied to the heating element and the power for a possible cooling fan. So I solder some female pins for the Arduino and the stepper driver. And then I add the MOSFETs. Finally, I add all the capacitors and resistors. And I also add the input and the output screw terminals. This is the schematic for this PCB, and you could download it from below this video. As you can see, the board will work at 12 volts, so we need a 12 volt supply. Now the PCB is ready. As you can see, it has some 3mm holes so we could screw it in place below the wood board. But first we have to test it. First I connect an ice crusty display and the thermistor to the PCB. I want to see if I can read the temperature. I upload the first code that will only read the thermistor temperature and print it on the screen. And it looks that it works ok. Next we need to control the stepper motor. Connect the motor to the driver output. To test this, I have this other code that is using the Excel stepper library to change the speed of the motor according to the potentiometer value. 
I upload it and as you can see, I can activate the rotation with a push button. And then using a potentiometer, I can change the speed. So this also works ok. And the last part is to control the power that is applied to the heater with the MOSFET and also read the temperature and control the set point at a certain value, let's say 200 degrees. I've made this code with a PID control that will change the PWM value applied to the MOSFET and keep a steady value. I've uploaded the code to the Arduino and connected the heater and the thermistor to the PCB together with the LCD screen once again. As you can see the PID value gets lower and lower as the temperature reaches the set point of 200 degrees and then the temperature will stay steady more or less on that point. So the temperature PID control also works. So everything works. I've connected everything below the wood board and fixed the PCB with screws. For now I've just glued the screen and the controls here on the board as well. And then I create the final code that will heat up the block, read the temperature and control the speed of the stepper motor, all at the same time. And this is the final code that you could download from below. So upload it and let's give it a test. The temperature will stay at around 200 degrees. And the values are printed on the screen and I can control the motor speed using the potentiometer. It's time to create some filament. But for that we first have to make some bottle plastic tape strips. But before that we need to make the bottle smoother. Because as you can see this bottle is not smooth. It has all sorts of shapes on it and we don't want that. And the best way to make that is to place some water inside of the bottle. And then we put some water to boil in a cooking pot. Place the bottle inside of the cooking pot and let it boil so the water inside will vaporize and increase the pressure. At the same time you could also make the plastic softer by hitting it with a heat gun. And as you can see the bottle is now smooth. We can now cut it. I've tried some different methods for the stripes cutter. The one with the bearings should be better, but I wasn't able to make the bearings perfectly flat. But anyway I've just printed this support and placed a cutter knife. The 3D printed part should give the maximum width of the plastic tape. So cut the bottom of the bottle. Then you cut a small part and insert it into the cutter. Now just pull and you will see how the tape is created. You can make a few meters out of each bottle. But it also depends on the bottle size. I wind the plastic tape on a spool holder. Now heat up the machine. We cut a very thin part of the tip of the plastic tape. And then insert that into the extruder and pull it using some pliers. And we pull till we have enough length. And insert that plastic filament into the pulling spool. Now increase the speed and adjust it to have more or less 1.75mm filament. And you might need to change the speed, the width of the plastic tape or the nozzle diameter. So try this till you get good results. Also the more you inflate the bottles, the thinner will the plastic be, so the filament will be smaller later. Have that in mind. So just like that, in a few minutes, I have my first filament that is made out of a PET bottle and looks promising. And using the same method I've tried some different colors. And all is left to do is to try the new filament with a 3D printer. I place the filament over an old empty spool that I had laying around. I preheat the printer at 260 degrees. Insert the filament till you can see some plastic coming out from the nozzle. I print an example file of a cube. We start and it seems to go ok. But the printer was having some problems staying at 260 degrees. I never printed at that value. So the test cube was turning out more or less. But as you can see after a few layers, I decreased the speed and increased the flow rate. And you can see the difference. Also after a while, the filament got stuck for a moment, so a few layers weren't printed. But then the print continued without any problems. So I guess that the material is ok, but you have to make some more tests till you get the good configuration for the speed, the temperature, the flow rate and so on. 
but hey, I was able to print something using some plastic from a PET bottle. That's pretty cool, right? And obviously there are a lot of parts that could improve with this project, but that is for a future update video, because I was working on this one for more than a month. But feel free to improve it yourself. So guys, that's how you could make a filament out of PET bottles. You have my PCB below for download, so get it and order it at PCBWay. Get my schematic, my code and everything that you need for this project from electrums.com and try your own filament puller machine. I hope that you like this project and if so, consider giving me a like or comment below. Thanks again and see you later guys. Hey guys, so that was the video for this week, I hope that you like it and as always, the most important part for me is that you have learned something new. And I would like to thank you to all of you who are supporting me on Patreon because that for me is huge. And by the way, if you would like to support my projects, you have all my links below for this Patreon page, for my social media, for my shop and so on. So thanks again and see you later guys.